since 2022. This series of unconditionally pro-life videos on demand is brought to you by Live Life in partnership with the Live Christ Share Christ Mission. My name is Javi Padilla, husband, father of five, and occasional YouTuber. Let's get to it. Roe v. Wade, which made abortion legal in all states across the United States, was miraculously overturned, and now more and more people are joining the abortion debate. So this gives us, Catholics and conservatives alike, a chance to educate and inform others about our pro-life stand. This is our opportunity to defend life and reframe the narrative, which is actually the truth, about abortion so we can proclaim the truth and our radical love for life. But how do we reply to these pro-choice people? Here are some replies we can give to them. Pro-choice argument number one. The fetus is just a simple blob of tissue or clump of cells. Many pro-choicers, let's call them anti-lifers because that is what they really are. They are choosing to kill another human being. They claim that the fetus is a simple blob of tissue. Therefore, a pregnant woman can kill it if it is unwanted. Let's speak of tissues. These are component parts of a living organism. So we are all made up of tissues. We are all a clump of cells. But we are not blobs in the sense of the word that is unidentifiable. The fetus is a human being. It does not change the fact that it's a human organism and has absolutely the right to life. This is why anti-lifers do not like ultrasounds because pregnant women can see the lives within them. They're not just formless blobs of tissue. Argument number two, every woman should have control over her own body. Reproductive freedom is a human right. Radical feminists have painted the abortion issue as a fight for the right of the woman. For them, banning abortion would mean that the woman has lost all control over her own body and an oppression to her basic and reproductive rights. But we need to remind them that the unborn child in the womb has the same right. The unborn baby is in her body but is separate from her. The mother and the child are distinct human beings. Both bodies have an undeniable right to life. Again, this goes against their main argument that the child is just a blob of tissue, which we know to be untrue. Funny when anti-lifers want to have a baby, they are suddenly pregnant with a baby in their announcement. But when they want an abortion, then it is just a clump of cells. They twist the story to suit their own needs. Anti-lifers argument number three. Abortion for hard cases like rape must be legal. We saw this in the presidential elections here in the Philippines when they interviewed presidentials how this was pushed and pushed to allow abortion. But these represent a tiny fraction of abortions. Anti-lifers rally that women should not be forced to raise the child of their rapist. We empathize that rape is a terrible thing and those who commit the crime deserve to be punished. Victims of rape deserve compassion and care. However, this does not mean that abortion is the way to go. Abortion is murder. You add that to the life of the woman who has been raped, it causes irreparable damage to her. Rape is wrong, but abortion is also wrong. The innocent child who was in no way at fault in this situation must be saved. They must not be given the death punishment. There are ways to remedy the situation, counseling, adoption, and for the men, teaching them responsibility and accountability at a young age. We can talk about this more in the future. There are, there are too many stories of women who have had abortions who suffer mentally, emotionally, spiritually. We must stop this from happening. Now here are our convictions. Pro-life conviction number one. Life begins at conception, making abortion murder. Let's call it what it is. Science has proven countless times that life begins at the moment of conception. It teaches us that an embryo is a stage of biological human development. We cannot and should not intentionally kill an innocent human being. Most abortions that happen now are because women deem it as ill-timing, interfering with their vacations, etc., etc. They must realize the effects of what they are doing. Pro-life conviction number two. Freedom is not just doing what you want, but having the right to do what is just and good. We must keep in mind that true freedom does not step on other people's rights. Unfortunately, today's society defines freedom as freedom from consequences, rules, and constraints, so we can do whatever we want. We see so many snowflakes and woke people who break down at the first sign of inconvenience. True freedom should lead us to do what we ought to do and not what we just want to. We should be promoting practicing chastity, patience, and self-control. Because if you have sex, then you can get pregnant. So you should know the consequence or results of your actions. Pro-life conviction number three. 
Abortion does not bring healing to a rape victim. Abortion will not change what happened, and it cannot make a victim forget what happened. In fact, it can worsen the condition of the mother. Abortion does not make a woman's life better. No sane woman will realis realistically tell you that. People who have had abortions are hurting and are living out their pain and hurt. A woman who has experienced sexual assault has undergone a traumatic experience. Abortion adds another trauma to their experience. It creates another victim. We must be able to reach out to more women and their families and inform them of the real loving choices they can make. Never, never waver in our pro-life views. Speak out, stand up, do not be afraid. Definitely it will be difficult, but we are all here together to help one another. There's so much work to be done. Abortion is just a mere symptom of our society that lacks information, education, and proper care. We should not be brainwashed by the West to be like them. Look at them and look how crazy their society is becoming. The world needs to know the truth that abortion is the murder of the innocent unborn. Let us do our part so we can build a more just and humane society. And let this be our loud cry for a radical love for life. Thank you for joining us. God bless you.